So a little bit about uh, Josh here. Hi guys, I'm Josh. Uh, I work with Dave, I'm a security analyst there. Um, I do just about anything technical, including watching Dave m modify my slides. Because uh, Dave is a big Perl fan, he loves Perl, and uh, he programs solely in Perl. I do Python, so I mean, I'm not as good as him. He's being sarcastic. So the people give me thumbs up, it's sarcasm. I do not like Perl. Dude, you should see all the things he's got out there in CPAN. So next slide. Um, <laughs> So I have heavy experience in penetration testing and all that good stuff. Uh, wrote the Social Engineer Toolkit. Um, woo! So really, how many people use it? We got two people. We got two. It's good. That's all I wanted. So we got heavy, I got a heavy military background. Uh, deployed to Iraq a couple times and yada yada. Before we start, I want to say a special thanks to Iron Geek and Kathy Peters. Kathy, you in here? Guess not. Thank you. <laughs> So let's do a little brief intro to PowerShell. Is anybody here familiar with PowerShell? Know what PowerShell is? Use PowerShell on a regular basis. That's great. So, wow, that was a lot of people. It was a lot of people. Yeah. So it's installed by default on Windows 7 and Server 2008. Uh, in Windows 7, you cannot uninstall. Um, so it's basically embedded into the OS at this point. Uh, PowerShell basically is a fully flexible, um, you know, Unix Linux type uh, programming environment or Bash environment. And it actually integrates completely into the .NET programming language, which we'll be seeing a lot of that today. So if you haven't seen it, it's really exciting. That's what it looks like. I don't know. Can you guys tell that's blue? Uh -huh. Just so you know, that's blue. It's 2010, and we're still using the same command prompt from Windows 98. They upgraded. They put a PS. It in says front PS of it. in front of it, so yeah, that is better. And it's blue. The blue is kind of nice. You can make it transparent too. Hey, when you maximize though, it still goes. Doesn't expand. Yeah. I think they would fix that by now. So PowerShell for hackers. You need to learn how to spell. Yeah. So we will be getting our. Uh, uh, we'll be the first ones to admit that uh, PowerShell is absolutely a benefit to uh, the IT as well as us as security professionals, right? Uh, you'll see a lot of demos here as proof of concept codes as well as um, if you go to my site at the end of this talk, uh, secmaniac.com. You can download all the proof of concept codes and new Metasploit modules and all that other good stuff. Um, but I'll say is, is for us from a security standpoint, we generally didn't have this type of programming language at the command line. Uh, the ability to completely interface with the .NET framework uh, and do whatever we want from an automation perspective is really sexy to us. Uh, and you'll be seeing a little bit of uh, a couple demonstrations as we go with that. Yeah, before we had to rely on like VBS scripts and batch files and stuff like that. And CSC. this were, yeah, they, not a lot of power in those, but this definitely takes a cake. So, execution policies. Want to talk a little about that? Yeah, the execution policies are there. It's kind of a security benefit, kind of, not really. Microsoft will even admit now that it's not really there for security. But you have restricted, which pretty much restricts all execution of PowerShell scripts on the system. You can still execute PowerShell and run your commands within the environment, but you can't execute the actual PS1 files that you have. Um, all sign requires all scripts to be signed before they can be executed. Uh, the other one's remote sign, so anything you download from the internet, um, it creates an alternative data stream and it will let uh, PowerShell know that it's been downloaded from the internet. And if it's not been signed, it will not execute. But you can still execute your own scripts that you've written. And then unrestricted is unrestricted. You can execute any PowerShell script that you want. So it's unrestricted? Um, that's what I heard. Okay. Sorry, I was confused. I, I, I couldn't tell. So release of Metasploit Module 1. I don't know if you guys remember, but in uh, Fast Track, um, what we used with, uh, uh, if you're doing SQL injection or uh, through specifically MS SQL or you find like a weak SA account or something like that, uh, what we were doing is we were taking a uh, binary, converting it to hexadecimal, and then using the XP command shell store procedure to write that hexadecimal representation of the binary to the underlying operating system. Try saying that three times fast. Did anyone here actually use Fast Track and use that part? Oh wow, okay, that's good. Okay, this is so new, this is all new to you guys. Awesome, great. So we just did this, that stuff never existed. Yeah. This is all new. Right. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. I spent like four months on that. Anyways. Um, <laughs> Not so with me, you didn't. When it, when it gets, it gets uh, set to the underlying operating system as hex, we used to call Windows Debug to convert it back to a binary for us. Now there was a slight little problem. You had the 64K restrictions that Windows Debug has. So if your binary was larger than 64K, Debug would kank out and wouldn't allow you to do it. So what we ended up doing, or, or you know, the team that I was uh, with at the time, 
uh, basically wrote a small stager that just reads in hex and spits out binary. So we basically got around the um, debug execute uh, the debug 64k restriction. Now the problem is, is uh, as soon, shortly after that talk, they removed debug from all 64-bit systems. Uh, so the traditional method for payload delivery was no longer existent. So we're releasing a new Metasploit module called the PowerShell Debug. It allows you to do the exact same thing all through PowerShell. And one thing I'd like to say uh, with this, and we'll talk a little bit more about this in a few, bit, uh, few minutes, but these type of um, attacks, the PowerShell attacks, like Metasploit modules that will be shown, the, the bypass, the reverse and bind shell purely in PowerShell, or none of these are getting hit by AV or HIPS. So it's a completely new attack vector that no one's really looking at, uh, and you can basically get anything you want through the system, which is kind of nice. Oops. So a quick demo. You guys probably can't see that, huh? So I'll just I'll do a little narrative here for a second. Uh, we're just doing a quick nmap scan of a host. Nothing spectacular. We find that 1433 is open. We load up our favorite tool, Metasploit, and we're going to try to brute force the SA account. And the SA account is, if you're using uh, integrated or SQL authentication, it's the account that gets created by default, the sysadmin account for Microsoft SQL if we didn't, weren't familiar with that. Very easy to find in large organizations. And we're going to go ahead and brute force this account. So very quickly with 255 threads, uh, it finds a SA account of, of blank. I'm sorry, with, uh, yeah, blank. So now we're going to load up our new uh, SQL, uh, MS SQL payload that will be put into the uh, Metasploit uh, repositories here virtually. I talked to HD, he's working on it. And um, basically we're going to go ahead and attack. Now what we're going to do next is we're going to, there's, there's new options added to this specific payload. So instead of using the debug version, it'll allow you to use the PowerShell version. So you just use PowerShell, set it to true. You turn off the old one and hit exploit. Now this is all going to take a executable, convert it to hex, put it on the learning operating system, bypass execution restriction policies, which we'll talk about in a second, and then we'll actually execute the payload on the system and we get a interpreter shell. That looked easy. So just a real quick recap, binary is converted to hex and placed into the file system. Convert script is created to take the hexadecimal and rewrite it back as a, bi uh, a byte array as binary. Uh, payload is now uh, on the system for execution. So execution restriction policies, um, you know, they're not, they shouldn't be relied upon for any type of protection whatsoever. Uh, they're really not designed for that. Uh, if you look at the sites and, and people talking about it, a lot of people do talk about it as a preventative measure for, you know, not allowing scripts to execute or not allowing to get specific code on the uh, system itself. It's really not designed for that and it's very easy to bypass. Um, execution restriction policies really do not help from a post exploitation perspective, period. Do you want to talk about this? Sure. Oh, so the, the, the create command uh, release, we'll be releasing the tool, it's also on, on secmaniac.com. Uh, basically the contents of the file are concatenated, compressed and converted to a base 64 string. Uh, the boilerplate bootstrap uh, created when we use specific calls, encoded command um, and command to basically invoke expressions for, um, use the invoke expression for executing our um, payload on the system. So basically what this essentially allows you to do is take any PowerShell script you want to, um, execute it, bypass all the execution restriction policies and allow you to run whatever you want to on the system itself. So with the most restrictive policy set on PowerShell, we can still execute whatever we want. Again, this really is not a security prevention method. Uh, no need to disable execution restriction policies through like registry interaction, reboots, et cetera, et cetera. We can just do it on the fly. So here's a quick demo. In this scenario, I'm actually going to be on the, the local system itself just to show you as a representation. So here we just created a macro to basically set the execution restriction policy to unrestricted. Um, and we're going to create a file. So we're, we, uh, we'll show you in the next slide. Uh, we wrote a, uh, a tool called PowerDump, and um, basically it'll, it'll dump the SAM database purely through PowerShell. So in this example, we're going to actually use the PowerDump to get around the execution restriction policy through our new command create command. And so what it does is it actually sets out a bat file for you, a, a nice little bat file. You just double-click the bat file, loads everything into PowerShell for you, and you just call your function. So we're creating a service right here. 
uh, as, as systems so we can dump the SAM database. We're running a system right here. And we're going to go ahead and execute that specific bat file. It loads everything into PowerShell for us, and all I have to do is type dump hashes, and we have the hash values bypassing execution restriction policies. So what's really nice, go ahead. All right, so what's really nice, since we have full access to PowerShell and .NET libraries, we can do pretty much anything we want. Um, releasing today is a proof of concept of a reverse bind and a regular bind of a command shell, just as a proof of concept to see if we could really, you know, utilize the .NET libraries to, you know, do some post-exploitation stuff. One thing about that is it's purely coded in PowerShell. So, I mean, it's a bind and reverse, completely coded in PowerShell. We're actually looking at uh, editing that to the MSF payload libraries, um, as well as a few others, doing interpreter through PowerShell, a lot of other great things. And this was also written in PowerShell version 1, so this is compatible with both version 1 and version 2 that you see on all the newer operating systems. So a real quick demo of the, um, the new Metasploit module power dump. And we have to give a big shout out to Kathy Peters on this one because she's the one that coded most of this. Uh, I did a lot of research, but she was the one that actually was able to get it done in, in time. So if you look here, we're running a fully patched Server 2008 R2 64 bit platform. All you do is specifically call the power dump executable or the um, add on. And it will go ahead and dump the hash values for us. Done. So All who PowerShell. Thought you, who thought you could do that with PowerShell? So yeah. Interpreter-based module will dump the SAM database purely through PowerShell. Again, um, you can download them from our site if you want it immediately. Um, and it's broken up into two parts. So, you know, you have the Metasploit module zip file, and then you have the PowerShell based examples. Um, so, either one, all the proof of concept code for PowerDump without having it in um, interpreter is also there as well. So, anything that you want to go through and modify or add, go for it. So, PowerDump is a meta, um, interpreter based module. We'll dump the SAM database for, for, through PowerShell. It works on all operating systems, uh, both x86 uh, and 64 bit. Any, obviously, anything that has PowerShell installed on it. Uh, which in Service Pack 3 it's an optional update, uh, and Windows Vista it's an optional update, but Windows 7 um, and Server 2008 it's 100% uh, you know, installed by default. Another interesting component with PowerShell is there's going to be full, there already is full integration into Exchange 2010 uh, as well as any new Microsoft product that comes out. So PowerShell will be 100% integrated into pretty much every aspect of the Microsoft product line, which will definitely be, you know, beneficial for us as we're going through and performing penetration tests um, and doing different things. I mean, you're talking about a whole new vector of tools and, you know, different ways of, of attacking systems that, you know, we generally didn't have before. So one of the tools I write is the Social Engineer Toolkit, and it's very applicable to what we're going to do here because I have here a Tinsy device, and we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, for, you, for those of you that don't know the Social Engineer Toolkit, um, it's a tool for social engineering. <laughs> That's about it. No creative name there. Yeah. It's also called Set. Uh, for some reason, I had this fascination with Arnold Palmer for the past like six months. My, every time my wife goes to the store, she buys the whole store out. So I have like gallons and gallons and gallons of Arnold Palmer. And I tell you, every time I drink Arnold Palmer, I crank out like 10,000 lines of code. So I really recommend if you're a hacker and you code, Arnold Palmer will basically make you, uh, will be, let, let you uh, present at DEF CON. Yeah, trade so. out your Mountain Dew, trade out your Dr. Pepper, get Arnold Palmer. You, are you tired of getting rejected? You know, you're tired of getting your submissions rejected? Drink Arnold Palmer and you'll be speaking at DEF CON. Look at me, I'm here. You don't drink Arnold Palmer. I know. <laughs> Tastes nasty. Oh, dude. <laughs> get off stage. Get off. Just go. Dude, I almost broke my hand trying to get in your trunk because the Arnold Palmer was falling onto me. Yeah, so Walgreens uh, around the corner is actually sold out of Arnold Palmer. I was coming back with like three bags. You know, my arms are like extremely sore right now. It's going good. But uh, they're all gone. So the basics is said, it's open source. It's purely programmed in Python. Python. I'm working on a Perl version of it. Was that the archaic 1970s programming language toolkit? Sorry, okay. Perl guys. I, I really apologize. That was that was harsh. I think um, Jabra hates you now. Yeah, most likely.